Hey guys, so as a junior artist, I run to this problem a lot where I'm doing a flip sim and just to show what I have, I kind of have like a bowl of water, right? Um, and if I were to press play, <laughs> that water kind of disappears. They kind of like collide in on themselves and I lose all of that liquid in my cup, right? Which obviously isn't right. Um, and that's because if we click here, we know that the particle separation influences our resolution, right? But if we were to bring it down, that will stabilize it a little bit. We still have problems here, but it stabilizes a little bit. Obviously, we can keep going and like bring it down all the way and fix it. But that is such a brute force way that might not even work. Um, and let's bring that back up. So we kind of don't want to increase the resolution for of our sim just to stabilize it. That's never a good way. But if we think about it, um, our sims, this is a flip sim, it uses not only points, but it also uses volumes to calculate the uh, to calculate the simulation, right? So if we were to play it, we can see that our sim is actually, our sim actually uses 1200 voxels, which is really, really low. Um, if we look here, by default, it's set to a grid scale of two, and this is what controls the resolution of the voxels, right? So while this controls the resolution of the particles, this controls the resolution of the voxels. So if we go here and we're to bring this down to like one, we can see that it's still incredibly fast, but it's stabilized. And what actually happened was that we go here Go back here we can see it went from 1200 voxels to 12,000 um it's still calculating super fast but it's uh it's still adding voxels it's still adding that resolution which is able to stabilize the particles and not have them collapse in on each other so just to show what i uh what's actually been happening with my actual project is i have this uh cup of boiling water if you looked at the, my previous video i mentioned that i was working on boiling water and if we were to start from the beginning, right here, uh, this is the full cup of water, right? And as it's going, as it's boiling, it's starting to decrease. And just as a speculation, I'm not entirely sure what was happening, but just as a speculation, I had velocities and collisions spawning inside of here, which was removing volume from the sim, which means it was uh, the, that surface was, it was getting removed. Right, so we needed some way to stabilize it. So what I had to do was, uh, not only did I increase or decrease the grid scale and decrease the particle separation to a stable amount. I think my general uh, my general particle count is around a million for particles. At least when I sim, it's a million, and about a million for my surface. But I can see I have it to fourteen mil. So um, this was like more of my final. But what I had to do was not only did I decrease the grid scale on the particle step, I increased the particle radius scale. So if we actually look at the Houdini help doc, um, there's particles a lot of the time. They call this under resolved particles, which is like when particles are, uh, when the grid scale is too low, particles are in like multiple, particles share the same grid space, the same voxel space. So they don't really know what to do. So they just end up falling in on themselves. So what happens a lot of the time is that uh, if we look at this equation right here, it says the particle radius divided by the grid scale has to be greater than the square root of three over two. And that means that no matter what, there will always be particles uh, in uh, their own grid space. So they won't be, they won't be sharing uh, voxels. So uh, but th this whole calculation here doesn't really matter to me. What I like to see is that as I decrease the grid scale, I need to increase the particle radius scale because they're inversely proportional. So that means that in my case here, what I did was the default I think is 1.2. What I could also do is increase the particle radius scale. And what that'll help do is help smooth out the simulation. It won't stabilize it, but it'll smooth it out. But as that equation said, it will solve itself if you uh, increase the particle radius scale. So if we go back to our example here, um, I was losing volume before, but once I increased that particle radius scale, 
and kind of smooth everything out, you can see that I'm not losing that volume anymore, which is awesome. So basically what I'm trying to show you guys is that the main two ways of stabilizing a sim, when, you're, when you work with a fluid sim, you want to work with the particle separation and the grid scale to get something reasonable, to get something that like is fast iterations so you're not uh, simming like once a day or something. So we can increase those two here. And if that isn't working to stabilize your sim, you can always increase the particle radius scale and help smooth everything out. Um, a lot of people that I talk to say to increase the pressure in your sim or uh, change the way you do collisions and all that, but that's uh, not really a... But that's more of a labored, like, uh, brute force way when we could just increase the particle radius scale of the sim itself, and that'll help stabilize everything. So, yeah, I hope that that solves some things. I don't see it a lot online, so I wanted to put it out there just so people can reference it. So, yeah, if I got anything wrong or if I uh, define something wrong, please let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure... But with all the research that uh, that I've done with flip sims, this seems like the best way to describe it. So yeah, if you guys have anything, just uh, let me know and I'll see you guys later.